What is eczema? How does it present? What are the common symptoms of eczema? Welcome back. I'm Dr. Maria Zizian, a board-certified general surgeon and IFM-certified functional medicine physician. So today's topic is eczema. Eczema is a very common inflammatory skin condition. It's very common in childhood, and thankfully, many children grow out of it. However, even as an adult, you could develop eczema at the, any age. So nobody is completely immune from developing eczema. So what is the cause of eczema? Nobody knows the exact cause of eczema. However, there are two factors that are very important and they add and combine together to create eczema. Those two factors are genetic and environmental. And what happens is the common mechanism in eczema is the fact that skin cannot completely fulfill its barrier defensive function, meaning that the skin is supposed to protect us from external environment that could be harmful to us, such as microbes, toxins, pollutants, etc. And for some reason, the skin stops doing that. And in that case, we develop eczema. Also, I want to add that when we say the word eczema, eczema actually is an umbrella of many similar skin conditions, many subtypes. So the subtype of eczema that is used interchangeably with eczema is atopic dermatitis. And even in medical circles, we do often say eczema and mean atopic dermatitis. So, and um, atopic dermatitis is the most common manifestation or the most common subtype of eczema. So let's talk about atopic dermatitis and um, the symptoms. So the first thing is, of course, dry and sometimes thickened, scaly skin, and it's often red, of course. Why does it get thickened? It is from itching and scratching, and when you do it very frequently, and again, eczema or atopic dermatitis is a chronic condition, so people scratch a lot, so it becomes thickened, and that is one of the symptoms or one of the manifestations of eczema. The most common or the hallmark of atopic dermatitis is itching. And itching could be quite severe, keeping people up at night. And in some cases, if somebody scratches very violently, if itching becomes just horrendous, in that situation, there could be a superimposed bacterial infection. Rarely, we do see that in our clinic when there is an eczema, but there's also just hot red component to it. And the key word here that it's hot because that warm uh, representation of eczematous area is actually indicative of superimposed bacterial infection. And in that case, we do have to give antibiotics in addition to treating the actual eczema. So the next is often we have these brown gray patches uh, that could be anywhere on our body, including the trunk, face. They're, they could have a very slight um, gray tinge to them. They could be red, brown, yeah, with gray tinge. Um, additionally, you can have a little bumps with fluid leaking out of them. Interestingly, talking about eczema, it's really a um, disease that could be characterized by dryness. And frequently, patients say that. They say, well, I have this patch of dry skin. And they're exactly right, because for some reason, we're leaking moisture out of our body. So, and that's an important characteristic of eczema. Also, you can have these dryness and peeling and cracking, what we call in the medical world, fissures on the palms of our hands and soles of our feet. And that's also a, actually a subtype of uh, eczema uh, that is seen not infrequently, I would have to say. Where would you see, on which parts of the body would you see eczema? Like I started saying, on the palms and soles. Additionally, with the classic, the hallmark of eczema, like a textbook eczema, uh, presentation is on knees and elbows. However, it has to be on the inner component of the elbows and on the back of the knees. Those are classic places for eczema. Why is it so important, the exact location? Because 
another skin condition that has a different mechanism and it's called psoriasis. I'm sure you have heard of it. Psoriasis also affects the same areas, knees and elbows, but for elbows, it's the outer component of the elbows. And for the knees, it's the anterior component of the knees that are affected in psoriasis. So that's a textbook distinction between those two conditions. But I have to say that in real life, it's not always a textbook presentation. And sometimes you could have a mixed presentation in either eczema or psoriasis patients. So uh, clinical diagnosis is the key. So it's not just one difference, one distinction. Other than that, in eczema or atopic dermatitis, you can have any of your body affected. It could be face, neck is very common, uh, chest area, extremities, back. So uh, not many areas of the body are spared. So the next topic is what triggers eczema. There are many triggers. So the obvious triggers are something like irritants, and it could be detergents and soaps and uh, shampoo. So we always recommend hypoallergenic, uh, all of these uh, types of products. The second group, which is even bigger, it's allergens. And allergens could be dust mites, could be pollen, but also don't forget that allergens are the foods, and uh, this is a topic that's dear to my heart because we do talk about food sensitivities a lot and how they affect our skin. And eczema is one of these skin conditions that is very affected by the foods that we eat, for example, by dairy, which is a very common trigger. Again, it's not a trigger for everybody. It's a trigger for people who have a sensitivity to dairy. On that topic, there's also a concept of leaky gut. And the leaky gut essentially leads to our inability to protect the inside of our body from the toxins because leaky gut basically is leaking and it lets harmful substances to be absorbed in our blood. And it sounds familiar because we just talked about it in relation to our skin, how our skin is not protecting us. So there is a clear correlation as to what's going on inside of our body is manifesting externally. And that's why skin disorders and skin issues in general probably always are a reflection of what's going on inside. But this is a very beautiful symmetrical, I think, relationship of having leaky gut that manifest, manifests as problems with the skin not being able to defend us from the external bad guys, so to speak. So, and final trigger for atopic dermatitis slash eczema is, of course, stress. And I have to say that it's very rare nowadays to talk to somebody who is not stressed out. So I now am used to looking at stress not only as a trigger that could just trigger a flare up, but also stress as a background and chronic trigger because a lot of people are constantly stressed out and no wonder they do have a chronic manifestation of eczema. So it does make sense, unfortunately. So taking care of the stress should not be just empty words when it comes to treating eczema. Next time we will discuss conventional treatment for eczema. And for now, thank you so much for listening. Until next time, bye-bye.